Well, I'm originally from New Jersey. My mom's side of the family is from New Jersey, New York, and the tri-state area. But my dad's side of the family is from Norfolk, Virginia. And so I came here about, I was 14. I was halfway through my freshman year. And then I came back. Um, and I've been here since my sophomore year. So my family's from New Jersey, New York, and that, in that area. And my dad is from here. So that's what brought me here to Virginia. I grew up with a single mother. Um, and when I say grew up, I mean she had me. Um, and there was my sister. My mother, on the other hand, had a lot of difficulty with drugs and with not staying in one place. I went to a lot of different elementary schools, middle schools, even high schools. And um, I kind of had to just make a name for myself. Childhood was very difficult. It was a very difficult thing. I watched my mom, you know, come in and out of crack houses. I watched my sister, who was mentally retarded, disappear at night. Um, I watched my mom being beaten. I've gone days without eating, being left inside of a house as a kindergartner. And I think that's what made me become a kindergarten teacher because it starts there. Um, there was not a lot of guidance in my life. And um, my grandmother took custody of me when I was, I want to say, seven years old. And from 7 to 12, they were, those years out of my life, for those five years, I can say was okay. Um, my grandmother was an older woman, but she also had a lot of her grandchildren living in the house with her. So she was trying to make it work. And it was very difficult for her. So me being independent at 7, 8, 9 made it easier on her to take care of the other grandchildren. She didn't have to worry about my grades. She didn't have to worry about me getting into trouble. She just kind of let me do my own thing. Um, she passed away when I was 12 of lung cancer and that shifted my whole entire world back into this uproar and my mom got custody of me again and from that moment on after my grandmother passed away I'll never forget it. From that day on I thought my life was over. I couldn't breathe I had things from my childhood, awards and things like that, taken away from me all within a second's notice. Um, my mom was very good managing her life and managing her her money and, and just things like that. She cleaned herself up a little bit, went to rehab, and but it didn't help. Um, I came home one day from a vacation. Um, she got custody of me. And I came home from spending this, um, this rest of my ninth grade year with my dad. And so I came home, and I was excited, and I wanted to be home. I didn't want to be away from my mom, and I missed her, um, partly because I felt like I was responsible for her. And um, when I got back, I went to a friend's house, spent the night, spent the night, and that was the last time I saw my mom until I was 17 years old. And that was really difficult. Um, I spent a few months in a foster home, and then my dad got full custody of me, and that was a struggle within itself. We fought. He beat my... Excuse my language. He beat me. Um, we had fist fights. He drug me down steps. He's busted my lip, busted my jaw, busted everything until I finally moved out when I was 15. So I've been on my own for about 10 years now. Going on this to the 11th year. I'll be 26 in July. So it's been a huge transition from feeling like a kid into being an adult and Sometimes I feel like I missed out on my childhood, but other times I feel like if I didn't go through the things that I went through, I would not be as strong as I am today. Um, my, my sisters, you know, they've had two parents, and they've had the stability of a mom who is into their life, sports, you name it, they got it. And I grew up being jealous. I grew up being jealous because I was right there. I would call my dad and say, I need your help. My mom's doing this, can you help me? And he would just hang up the phone. He would hang up the phone in my face. And it was really difficult to deal with at 13 and 14 when you're hearing your father who's supposed to be your protector and, your, and, and the one who's gonna take care of you. And when he says, I can't help you, you feel like there's nothing left for you in the world. And that's kind of what happened to me. And I just snapped out of it and I said, well, I can't let myself become a statistic. You know, I won't be on drugs. I'll get my college degree. I'll graduate from high school. I'll get my master's degree. 
and I did all those things and um, I'm not finished there's a lot of things in my life that I need to do and um, there's a lot of emotional scars from my childhood and growing up and and just being left out in the world that I'm shifting through now that I'm single and on my own and you know just dealing with me but I will say that it was a test of my true character and there were times where I would cry for seven years straight there was not one day from the age of 12 to 19 years old I'll never forget it the day that I stopped crying every single night I would go to sleep and cry I would daydream and wake up in tears and wake up in cold sweats because it was it was my childhood was horrifying and um it just made me the person that I am there are some days where I flash back and I'll close my eyes and I'll look and I'll say I'm never want to be in that place when I feel myself wanting to stop and I feel myself wanting to just give up I say you can't and there's one thing that is making me drive today my, when my grandmother passed away at 12, um, I was the last person to speak to her. And I was on my way to school. i never forget, I was in the seventh grade. I was on my way to school, and they called and said she's in the hospital, she's not breathing. And um, I laid in the bed with her, and she said to me, Shannon, you are the one who has to make a name for this family. And if it's not you, then the McClendon, the McClendon name will die. That's my mother's name. Um, the McClendon name will die, so it starts with you. The next thing I know, flatline. And um, I caught my school books and went to school. Wow. And from that moment on, I've been just surviving and, and living. And for 25 years, I survived. And now that I'm going into my 26th year of life, I am finally, finally living my life. And it's been hard. And I trust me, it's still hard. And, but I will never go back to who I was or what people put me through because I am in charge of my own destiny and I'm in charge of the life that that I'm going to lead and I will never allow myself to you know to being a black woman you know, is a challenge in itself and excuse me being an African American lesbian woman is, is a challenge in itself as well and I can't necessarily say that I've had to face a lot of the difficulties that a lot of African Americans had I think it's because I want to say I'm a chameleon and I can adapt to different situations so when things are placed upon me I just roll with the punches. Originally I went to school to be a producer. I wanted to be the next Oprah um, but I have a mentally retarded sister and I heard on the radio one day about a master's program in special education and I've always taught and did things and was a nanny and just had a lot of things that had to do with education and so I said you know let me just try something new um, and I started my master's in February of 2008 and now I'm a special education teacher for kindergarten.